we're on Columbia Square, um, and then right over my shoulder is uh, the Davenport House, the Isaiah Davenport House, an 1820 Federal Building, which is important on any number of levels, um, not the least of which is this is where the preservation movement began in Savannah. Um, in 1955, this building was uh, threatened with demolition, and seven visionary ladies came together and pooled some funds and purchased it for $22,500. And thus began Historic Savannah Foundation and our revolving fund for all intents and purposes. It began a few years later, but the revolving fund um, is our best tool for saving endangered historic properties. Um, we buy them when they are at their last um, hope, I guess, and, um, and then we purchase them and uh, stabilize them, mothball them, and then market them to um, preservation-minded buyers um, in hopes that they will preserve the building, uh, and then um, we'll uh, place protective covenants on the property so that it will be protected in perpetuity. Um, but it's, you know, it's a great way um, to really affect preservation. It's, uh, real estate's the name of the game, to be honest. If you're going to be involved in preservation, you should really be in preservation, not just on the sidelines or in the peanut gallery. Um, advocacy is important, don't get me wrong, but when you can really step up, put your name and your credibility and your money on the line and save a property, then you earn some respect in the community. And that's what we've done for 55 years or so. Um, and it began right here. And that's, it's, a, it's a great story because um, it would have been a surface parking lot. We not only would have lost a, a great federal building and, and, a, and a beautifully um, mastered building, um, but we would have lost a sense of ourselves. We would have lost that sense of place that makes Savannah so unique and so special. So we have done this, if you will, 350 plus times throughout the city. Um, and to some extent, um, you know, preservation and Historic Savannah Foundation are the reason, are the reasons that uh, Savannah is what it is today. And it's why 6.8 million people come here every year. They come for the authentic, preserved history, not for the Disneyland version, but for the real thing. Um, so it's so important that we are good stewards of this unique and fragile resource. Um, it is a one of a kind, and we cannot take it for granted. Um, we, have to, we have to be uh, vigil all the time to really take care of these places and others um, so that we maintain our sense of who we are. Welcome to Thomas Square. Uh, this is one of our 13 historic districts in Savannah and Chatham County. And we're on Habersham Street. And we're about a mile south of downtown in, in the landmark district. So this is one of the neighborhoods that Historic Savannah Foundation is trying to protect and preserve. Uh, because the building stock here is good. It's, it's later than downtown. It's, it's a more Victorian era, late 19th, early 20th century. century. Um, but nonetheless, uh, representative of, of, um, of the growth of our city and the, and the growth of our country. Um, and, and I always like to say that history and preservation um, are continuums or continua. But they're, um, you have to have representation from each period. Um, you have to have um, a complete story. So you can't leave chapters out, you can't leave periods out. Um, so if we just saved the best of the best of the best in one, one period in time, well, we'd have a good story, but only part of the story. Um, this way, when we save places like 1505 Habersham, um, this is much more vernacular, much more lowercase d democratic. Um, you know, the common man. And, but this is what most of us experience. This is what most of us know. So the thought here, when this dilapidated building was, or was dilapidated when we purchased it, um, was that it, it you, you know, to lose it, you see it's got vacant lots on either side. So our point here is, let's control one lot 
let's have a good rehab, and then if something goes on either side of it, this will be the context for it. So instead of having, you know, maybe a big building, we'll have a lot of smaller buildings. We'll maintain that density, um, maintain that urban form that's so important to Savannah, and that's that form that General Oglethorpe laid out when he came here in 1733. He, he laid out a very geometric, grid-like system of squares, of squares, of streets and lanes, and we had trust lots and tithing lots, and I need a chalkboard to explain how all that works, um, but it's, it's beauty and genius is in its simplicity, because as a military man, he wanted to be able to muster people quickly, and that's what the center square is about. You could use it for kitchen gardens or grazing livestock, um, they're not big, um, but in times of emergency or just in day-to-day -day life, people could get together and talk and share. Um, and we still do that today. What, what began as sort of a, uh, maybe a military approach to a, a downtown plan has turned into our social approach. Um, the, the squares are our living rooms and we're out there every evening walking our dogs and having cocktails and you know, sharing news of the day. Um, but um, this plan works. It's it, laid out in 1733. It's almost 300 years old and it still works. It's still valid. Um, it's still relevant. And, and uh, the plan is as important, I think, as what's on top of the plan, and that's the historic well, buildings. We're in Collar Brownville now, and this is a really good working class neighborhood. Um, these are modest vernacular buildings, again, late 19th, early 20th century, um, a lot of shotguns. Um, What's that mean? That's what this whole row is here to the left. These are all, this is a nice row of shotguns, which, you know, is a housing type that um, originated actually in West Africa and was brought um, through the, sort of the Caribbean over to New Orleans and then up the Mississippi and spread sort of throughout the southern and southeastern United States. Um, but there's quite a bit of work to be done in Kyler Brownville. Um, it, uh, it's, it's, it's sort of downtrodden and, and this is maybe where we're trying to break the cycle of blight more than anything else. And blight is of course when a property becomes vacant and neglected and deteriorated and it loses its value and anyone that really cares about it. And this corner property is one that we've kind of started doing that with where Mrs. Jones, who lives here but lives alone, um, needed some help. So we helped her with her property. We actually did um, you know, some hands-on work just to do basic things so that she can stay in the house. So, you know, we kind of helped do some things to make it more livable for her. Very modest house, but important house, again, on a corner. So if she can stay in the house, the house doesn't become vacant. If it doesn't become vacant, it doesn't become deteriorated. If it doesn't become deteriorated, it doesn't become blighted. And then we don't have to worry about it, you know? For, for purposes of our protective covenants, Rehabilitation work needs to begin within three months and be completed within 18 months, which are not unreasonable time frames. If somebody's buying this property, we hope they're motivated to get to work. So we give them three months to sort of get themselves in order and then initiate work. And from that point on, they've got 15 months to complete the work. And again, we might, you know, have some flexibility with, with that, but the idea again is get somebody in, get the rehab underway, get it finished, um, and then move on. So, Because we need our payout so we can go on and move to the next project. We're going to keep doing what we're doing because uh, we have a, a successful model and it, it's, um, it's, it's, we, we have a sort of proven case. Um, but we, we, we have to do two things um, primarily. One, we have to take care of the landmark district. That's um, that's our bread and butter, um, and it, it is um, 
something that is, again, so valuable that we can never take that for granted. So we have to be advocates and educators about why this, this is important here. Then we have to say what worked here in the landmark district can work in these other neighborhoods as well. And it, it's a symbiotic relationship that the other neighborhoods feed off this and this feeds off them. So you need to have people who live and work here nearby. I don't have a car, I can ride my bike or walk to work. Um, and those surrounding neighborhoods um, are, are, are the life source, I think, for populating the downtown and keeping Savannah going. And, and so what we have to do is take our show on the road and into these neighborhoods and um, save all the endangered resources that we can so that we set the example or the model for others to follow.